Hi everyone, in today's video we are taking a look at how to make a scarf. If you've never crocheted before and you're interested in learning how to crochet, this is a great place to begin. We're going to be going over how to make this beautiful scarf that has multiple colors here. It's very easy and straightforward. The techniques we're going to be learning are how to chain and how to half double crochet. We'll also be going over all of the supplies that you'll need, the entire pattern from start to finish, how to fasten off your project when you're done and what that means, also how to make and attach fringe. So again, if you're just starting out with crochet, this is a great project to begin with um, because it's super straightforward and we will be going over everything you need to know to make your very own beautiful scarf. So let's get started. This is a true beginner level tutorial. If you feel comfortable gathering your supplies and your yarn on your own, please feel free to do so because over the course of the next few minutes, I'm going to be going over some very basic instructions on how to get ready for the project. So please feel free to use the chapter markers to skip ahead to the part called Making Fringe, where we will begin working on the project. So the first thing you'll want to do is get your supplies. I'm using Yarnspirations. This is a Karen Big Donut, and this is an OGO. So this is a new format that they're doing with yarn where you're actually, and you can kind of see it in this picture, you're taking the yarn from the outside. So you don't need to worry about rolling it into a ball first or finding the, you know, the yarn from the middle of a skein like you would traditionally do. This is a perfect thing to start with if you've never worked with yarn before or if you've only made a couple of projects in the past because it's extremely easy to work with. Now let's take a look at how to get it ready for our project. The first thing you want to do is remove the packaging. All of the information about the yarn can be found on the bottom of the package and then there's also detailed instructions on how to prepare it for your project. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to separate those two colors, whatever they may be, right there in the middle. And then you can see a plastic tie. Hopefully you can see it right there. And then you just cut that. And then you'll have to poke around for a moment to find the plastic tie. And once you do, you'll just want to pull that out of the yarn. It's throughout the length of it and you don't want that to get in the way of your project while you're working. So remove that. The colorway that I'm using today is called Raspberry Glazed. There are seven other colorways in this yarn variety that they sell, so be sure to pick whichever one you like best. Uh, it's important to note that this is 100% acrylic yarn, so it's machine washable and dryable. We've got a yarn weight of four, and we do use the whole skein, so about 502 yards. All of this information is also listed in the description box below. All right, so let's talk about the supplies that we need that aren't the yarn. So obviously you'll need your crochet hook. We're using a size H hook, which is also an eight or a five millimeter crochet hook. It's really important that you use the right size for the pattern that you're working on because using an incorrect size will result in a different size scarf. And it may also look weird with the yarn. So be sure to always check that when you're working on a new pattern that you're using the right crochet hook. You'll also need scissors, a tape measure or a ruler, and then you'll also need a blunt yarn needle. So you can see that this guy here is not sharp at the end, and that's exactly what we're looking for. If you use a sharp sewing needle, it may accidentally felt the yarn together when you're weaving in your ends, and that will just give you kind of a headache when you're trying to weave in your ends, it'll end up getting stuck. So make sure that you invest in one of these guys, they're only a couple dollars. Okay, so now let's move on to making the fringe. So let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of this scarf. This is a self-striping yarn, and what that means is that as we go along, it's just going to work the stripes for us. So if I begin down here with this color, I wanna make sure to set some of this yarn aside so that the fringe of this side of the scarf matches this first block of color, right? And so we'll do the same when we end the scarf. We'll make sure that we set some of the ending color aside so that the end of the scarf has matching fringe as well. So let's look at how to make the fringe. We're gonna begin by doing that, just to reserve that yarn. You do need a book to do this, 
and you need a book that's as wide as you want the length of the fringe to be. So I want my fringe to be about six or seven inches long. So I've got a six and about a half inch book here. Next, what you're going to do is wrap the yarn around your book. And you're gonna wrap it around your book 60 times. That's because we are working a scarf that has 20 stitches in it. And for each stitch, I'm going to want three strands of yarn. As you're wrapping the yarn around the book, make sure that the strands of yarn don't overlap each other and are sitting right next to each other instead. And this will ensure that the lengths are all the same. If you'd like a more in-depth tutorial on how to make fringe, I do have that available. Okay, so you can see here that I've wrapped my yarn as many times as I needed to. I did about a dozen extra just to be sure that I had enough yarn. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip the book kind of on its side. And then I am just going to carefully cut down the middle. Just kind of bracing it on the side as I cut to make sure it doesn't slip away. And now you have got enough fringe for the end of your project. Okay, and you can just set this off to the side and we will be ready to use that when the time comes. Please repeat this with the opposite side of the skein so you have enough fringe for both ends. All right, so we've got our tools, we've got our fringe set to the side, and now it's time to actually begin crocheting. So I want you to grab the tail end just like so, and what we're going to do is make a slip knot. To do this, we wrap the tail end of the yarn around our fingers to make a loop. Remove the loop from your fingers, Pull the tail end just to the underside of that loop. Grab the tail end. And then just pull it through, allowing the yarn to tighten around it. So this is our tail end of the yarn over here. And then this side that's attached to the skein of yarn is our working end. Make sure your tail end is about six inches long so you can weave that in later. You can see with the slip knot that it is adjustable. So if I pull on this, it's making the tail end shorter. And if I pull on the tail end, it's making the loop smaller. So what we wanna do is we wanna get our hook into the loop and then we want to adjust this by pulling on the tail end until the yarn is just around the base of the shaft of the hook. Okay, we don't want it to be too tight and we don't want it to be loose. Just to where the knot, the slip knot, is just right against the hook like so. Now holding your yarn, there's a couple different ways to do it. A lot of beginners start out just by weaving the yarn through their fingers like so and then it comes off of the pointer finger and you can work with it like that. I wrap my yarn around my pinky and go under my ring and my middle finger and over my pointer finger. Now that to me feels the best for the tension. You will have to experiment to see which way you want to do it. In terms of holding the hook, there are a couple different ways. You can hold it like a pencil which is what I do, that just feels natural to me. Or some people hold it like this, kind of like a steak knife, okay? So whichever way, this to me doesn't feel like I have a lot of control, but the pencil really works for me in 
just the way that I crochet. So you will need to experiment with holding your yarn and holding your hook and seeing what feels best. Now let's begin by chaining. To start your chain, I found that it's best to just gently pinch the slip knot with your thumb and your middle finger. Then you want to have the hook in your right hand like so, yarn over is that movement, okay? So we're touching the yarn against the back of the hook and bringing it around to the front. And then the hook just sort of grabs it. Now if I just pull this through, that's our first chain. Now we're looking to chain 22 to get started. So again, we're going to yarn over, hook the yarn like that, and just pull through. A lot of beginners struggle with pulling too tightly. You don't want to pull it really tightly. You want to make sure that the yarn is just comfortably sliding up and down the hook and that you have some not loose tension. You don't want these to be big gaping holes, but you also don't want them to be really tight and puckered up either. Okay, so yarn over. There's a little bit of twist to that motion, see? So we're hitting it with the back of the hook and I'm sort of moving my thumb on my right hand to just grab the yarn and pull it through. Now you can see we've made three chains. Each one of these V's is a stitch. Okay, so let's go for four. Five. Hitting it with the back of the hook, twisting it a bit, grabbing the yarn and pulling it through. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yarning over, pulling through, that's ten. Yarning over, pulling through, eleven. 12, 13. You may be tempted to, when your yarn gets stuck down here, pull from here. That will make your stitch too tight. You wanna make sure that the yarn is wrapped around the shaft of the hook. So you wanna be working from the center of the hook right here, rather than really close to the top of the hook. And you'll notice that as I continue to work the chain, where I'm pinching um, is adjusted as well. So where I'm pinching the yarn with my left hand, I'm just moving it up a bit. And that gives me more control because I'm working with a smaller length of yarn. If you're really struggling with this, my recommendations are to either slow the video down or go to my full length chain tutorial where we go over how to do this with a chunkier yarn that's really easy to see. I'm just going to count really quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We need two more. Twenty-one, twenty-two. So now let's take a look at this. I'm just going to pull this loop really big so that it doesn't come undone easily. These are the edge of the stitches. So this will be the edge of the scarf. These back bumps, each one of these back bumps is the back of a stitch. So there's one, there's one, there's one. So you can also count your stitches by counting how many bumps are along the back. If you're having trouble seeing what I'm talking about, pause the video here and you can get a closer look at the highlighted back bumps. Okay, so let's get our hook back on there. 
Again, making sure to tighten it around this part of the hook. Now what we're going to do is yarn over. I'm going to just kind of hold that with my ring finger to keep it secure. And then using my thumb, I'm going to count these stitches. I am looking for the third stitch from the hook. Okay. So that is a stitch. That's the first stitch from the hook. This is the second stitch from the hook. And there is the third stitch from the hook. Now I'm going to insert my hook into the third stitch from the hook. And now we're going to work what's called a half double crochet. So I've begun by yarning over for a reason. And now I'm going to yarn over again Right? So I've hooked the yarn, so yarn over, and then I'm going to pull through. Now I have three loops on the hook. At this point, what I'm going to do is yarn over again, and I'm going to pull that through all three. And that is a half double crochet. That's our first stitch of this row. So again, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the next back bump, Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through. Now I have three loops on the hook. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through three. Again, yarn over, find the next back bump, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. You've got three loops on your hook. And then you want to yarn over and pull through three. We're going to work one half double crochet into each stitch across. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through three. Now let's say this isn't your first crochet project and you've watched other tutorials on YouTube and they're going in to that part of the V right there. That is also okay. Okay, if it's easier for you to go into this part of the chain, go ahead and do that. That is a part of the stitch, you can do that. The reason that I don't do that is because you can see it pulls that V away from itself and then that one part of it is gonna be your edge. By working into the back bump, the edge of the project looks just like the opposite edge of the project. It's a nice, it's almost like a braid, right? To me, there's no reason to go into that part of the stitch. So that's why I'm working into the back bump. We started by yarning over. And again, that's just from the back of the hook to the front. We insert our hook into the next stitch, we yarn over, pull through, and then we yarn over and we pull through three. Yarn over, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through three. Yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. This whole project is going to be worked in half double crochet. So once you get the hang of this stitch, this project should fly. If you've never done this stitch before, you will be an expert at it by the time you're done making this scarf. The cool thing about crochet is that there are only a few foundational stitches. And then once you know those, you can make anything. It's just a combination of combining other stitches at that point to make patterns. 
half double crochet is I would say the most common stitch especially with garments and that's because it works up more quickly than single crochet and it doesn't leave gaps like double crochet does you can see that this is making a fabric that doesn't have big holes in it Okay, we're approaching the end here, so let's take a look. I can see I have one, two, and three more bumps, which means that I have three more stitches to do. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over pull through three and then here's my last stitch let's take a look at both sides to see what this looks like the beginning and the end of the rows are definitely the hardest for beginners so i really want to be sure to show you what's going on here so you can see this v that's the last stitch and then that right there that's not a stitch right that doesn't look like a v that is the slip knot Okay, so we don't want to mess with that. That's just there to stop the yarn from unraveling on this side. Looking at the back side of the stitches, again, you can see there's just one bump remaining. So let's work our last half double crochet for this row. Oops. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three so now we should have 20 stitches but you're probably thinking but we chained 22 so how do we have 20 stitches let me show you looking over here on this side you can see the two extra chains if you look very closely those are not a stitch we work those to work up to the height of this row and you can see that, right? This is the first stitch right here. There's the V, there's the body of the stitch, there's the back side of the stitch. And then right here on the edge, just tiny, you can barely see it, is a chain two. We worked that just so that way the hook was in the correct place for the rest of the row, because we worked up to the height of this row. So now let's count our stitches and make sure we have 20. So again, the first V that you see here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Now again, don't let that chain confuse you, okay? So the chain two for this pattern is not going to count as a stitch. And you can see why, it's just barely there. It doesn't look like this, that's the stitch. So we don't want anything to do with that, just ignore it. I'll show you here on this end why we chain. What we're going to do is we're gonna start by chaining two and then turning our work. Now, if I, what if I didn't chain two, right? What if I just turned my work and started doing half double crochets? Well, see what would happen is that it, it would be much shorter in that first stitch. It wouldn't look right. See, it's sort of like pulled down on that end. So what we do to stop that is we chain two, one, two and see so now when i half double crochet i'm going to yarn over insert my hook into the first v that first stitch you can see the body of it right here i'm just going to go underneath both of those v's right you can see that there and then i'm going to yarn over and pull through now i've got three on the hook 
Gonna yarn over and pull through three. You can kind of see the chain right here, right? Just remember that doesn't count as a stitch. That's just so that this will set even on the side. It will keep our work a nice straight edge. Okay, so now for the rest of this row and for all subsequent rows, we are going to put one half double crochet into each stitch across. When we get to the end of the row, we're gonna chain two and turn, and then we're gonna do it again. That is the pattern for this. So next stitch, again, you can see it right there. That's the next stitch. What we're doing is we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, got three on the hook, yarn over and pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. And so you can see here, it's working up nicely. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. And you wanna just repeat that until you get to the end of this row. I'm gonna pick up the pace here because I wanna show you how to do the end again. If you haven't quite gotten the hang of the half double crochet yet, you can check out my other video on half double crochet, or you can go back and slow this video down. The bottom right hand corner, there's a cog. You can click that and you can adjust the playback settings will slow the video down. Just be sure to put me on mute so I don't sound like I'm having a stroke. Okay, so now you're wondering, what's the end, right? Which is the last stitch? Well, again, you can see the last stitch there because it's cute. This little weird knobby bit, that's just our chain two and that doesn't count. Looking at the top, you can see that's the last V. Sure. That one on the side looks like a V, but it's on the side. You don't wanna mess with it, okay? So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three. If you're not sure, count your stitches, and then you'll have 20 in every row. That's why I made this pattern with 20 stitches, so that way it's easy for beginners to count and make sure that they have the right amount. Now let's look at how to start the next row. We're gonna turn our work, we're gonna chain two. This right here is our first stitch. You can see the chain two if you're confused. One, two, that's not a stitch, that's the chain two. Yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. Now repeat one half double crochet in each stitch across till you get to the end of the row. Like I said, by the end of this scarf, you're gonna be a pro on this stitch, which is great because it's a stitch that you absolutely need to know and be a pro at. Really quick, this tail end, we're just gonna ignore it until we're done with the project and then we'll show you how to weave that in, just in case you were wondering.
Okay, so now we're coming up on the end. And you can see there's two stitches remaining. You can even count the chain too. You can see there's the back bump there, there's the second one, and then there's the top of the stitch. And again, looking at just the anatomy of the stitches here, this V is a part of the last stitch. If there's not a V there, that doesn't count as a stitch. Right? Okay, so inserting the hook, yarning over, pull through, yarn over and pull through three. Now you can see that the edges are nice and straight. Okay, so if you're not messing with the chain, your edges will look like this all the way through. Let's show you the end one more time. This is the end of row three, sorry, yeah, row three. I almost said round three. End of row three. We're going to turn our work, which means we just turn it over. And then we're going to chain one, chain two, And there is the top of the stitch, right? There's the body of it. There is the top of it. The reason I'm really driving this home is that a lot of beginners struggle to keep their edges straight. It's one of the hardest things to learn when you're first starting out. So I really want to drive it home looking at the anatomy of the stitches so that way you guys have got a nice even scarf. And that way you really understand what you're doing too. A lot of tutorials sort of gloss over the purpose of the chain. But again, you can see one, two, it just brings us up to the height of the stitch. So that way they're not being pulled down on the end, right? Now, if you have worked other patterns before, you may be saying, well, some patterns count that chain two as a stitch. And that's true for half double crochet, unfortunately, some people count it. But the Craft Yarn Council has now said, no, you really shouldn't be counting that chain two as a stitch. It just sort of gets lost in the edge there. And so there's no reason to count that little wonky bit, which doesn't look like a stitch, as a stitch. It's important to note that for double crochet, the chain does count as a stitch. We're not working double crochet. This whole pattern is half double crochet. So just be sure to ignore the chain. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing one half double crochet into every stitch across. Then we're gonna turn our work and chain two and repeat that until we get to the end of our yarn or until your scarf is the length that you want it to be, right? When we get to a color change, I will be sure to show you what to do. Check back in with you at that point. One thing I wanted to show you guys is that if you're working this in the correct weight yarn and you're using the H hook, for yours to look like mine, the gauge for 20 stitches is going to be six and three quarter inches. So you can see that here, I've just got the zero lined up with the left side, and then right here on the right, we're coming to about six and three quarters. So be sure to check yours and make sure that your tension is correct. If it's too tight, if your tension is too tight and you're crocheting too tightly, it's going to be smaller than this. If you're crocheting too loosely, it's going to be larger. So just check that and make sure that everything is looking accurate. Now, if it's just a little bit off, don't sweat it, right? But if you're looking for neat edges and then a nice dense fabric like this, where you can't get any thingies through there, you wanna be looking for six and three quarter inches for 20 stitches for half double crochet. I'll check back in with you when we get to our color change. 
Okay, so we've made it to where the color change is happening in the yarn. So there are two ways that you could proceed at this point. You could just carry on doing your half double crochets and let the color change happen wherever it happens, right? This would be the easiest way. Now you might get lucky and it could happen at the beginning of a row. Um, chances are it's not gonna be too noticeable. So if you're not feeling like doing any extra work, just carry on with your half double crochets and what we've been doing and let the color change happen wherever the yarn happens to change. And that's gonna vary with the dye lot and the skein of yarn that you have and then your own personal tension and all of that. Or what you could do, if you're really wanting it to be even where the new color starts at the beginning of a row, what you would wanna do is you would wanna frog or just stop if you can see the color change happening. This is called frogging because you're ripping it. Like rip it, rip it. <laughs> Okay, so we're down to the last stitch of the previous row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook into the top of that stitch. I'm gonna pull it out. And then at this point, I am going to yarn over, insert my hook into the last stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm just going to set it down. And I'm gonna leave it there. I'm going to cut with about six inches or so, eight inches. Give yourself a little bit of extra room. Just cut the yarn. And then what you're going to do is cut off all that extra yarn until the change happens. So we don't need that, so you can just set it to the side. Now what we're going to do is a color change. So again, I'm leaving about six to eight inches of a tail here. And then all I'm going to do is I am going to pull the new color through to complete that stitch, okay? So making sure to grab the working yarn, you just wanna set the tail off to the side. Now you want to chain two with the new yarn, flip your work, You will have to weave these ends in, so this is gonna give you a little bit of extra work as you can see, but if you want those nice, neat color changes, this is just how you do it. So at this point, what you wanna do is just continue doing your half double crochets as you have been doing. So we've yarned over, we're inserting the hook, yarn over, pulling through three. Okay, and now you can see I'm also working over this yarn. I'm going to do that for just a couple stitches. To do that, I just have the yarn flush against the project and I am just working right over it. Now later on when we are done with the project, I'll show you how to weave in the ends and we will um, get these looking nice and neat. For now, we're just gonna leave them hanging there. So then you just carry on until it's time to do your next color. And again, it's a personal preference. If you don't wanna do the extra work, having the color change happen in the middle of a row, it's not gonna be super obvious, but doing it this way will make it look super professional. Okay, so I'll meet you back here. Just continue on and I will show you, once you're done with the scarf, how to attach the fringe and how to weave in the ends. All right, so I don't have enough yarn left to finish another row. I was sure to reserve my fringe from earlier. And you can see I have one and two stitches remaining. So let's look at how to fasten off. Just want to complete those last two stitches. Okay, and then I like to pull a big loop just so I don't accidentally pull my work out. And then I'm going to leave a tail I normally do a longer tail than is necessary. You really only need a tail of about six to seven inches, but I normally do about 10, so I'm gonna cut it there. And then all you do to make sure it's fastened at this end before weaving in is you just pull the tail through, and then now that's not going to come unraveled. Okay, so let's take a look at weaving in our ends. What I'm going to do for this end here on the edge is I'm going to weave it through just a couple of stitches, and then I'm going to leave the tail end coming out so that way I can hide it in with the fringe, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is I have my yarn on my blunt yarn needle, and then I'm just going to go through weaving my yarn carefully in and out of some of these stitches, making sure to not split the stitch or the split the yarn by putting my needle right through the center of the ply. So that just means going around the strands of yarn rather than through the yarn. Okay. And then I'll also show you how to weave in the ends that are in the middle of your scarf. If you chose to cut your ends and have those really clean edges with colors, you're gonna have some tail ends that need weaving in. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm just going to go down a little bit and then I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna come out of that stitch there. So you can see me here just going around the yarn and through the stitches. And then when we do the fringe, I'll show you guys how to hide that tail in with the fringe. I'm just gonna leave that like that for now. I will show you, I wove in most of my ends for the scarf and I left one to show you guys. Okay, so here it is. I'm just gonna get my yarn on the needle. If you're finding you need a more in-depth tutorial on this, I will put a link to that in the description box below. So I do have a full length video on how to weave in your ends. As you can see, I am just going in and out of some of these stitches. It's good to normally go an inch or so in one direction and then in another direction and then back again towards it. You can get a little crazy with it. I normally zigzag throughout so that way there's not too much bulk of the yarn in one spot. And you can see how that tail end just sort of gets lost in the stitches. So now at this point I'm going to cut it because that's more than enough. And what I do when I cut mine is I normally pull it a little bit tighter than it needs to be and then trim it. You can see it there just a bit and then I pull it back and it just sort of disappears. Okay, so now let's take a look at how to do the fringe. So we will start with this end. You can see with the opposite end, I've done the same thing where I've weaved this in and out of some stitches and then I've got it just sort of hanging there. So I will show you how to hide that. This is our fringe that we cut earlier. I did the same for both ends. Just so that way they match. I'm gonna undo that. And now what we're going to do is we decided since there's 20 stitches, we're gonna do three strands for each stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab three of my strands here. I am going to make sure that they're all closely lined up from end to end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half, okay? Now, always entering from the same side that means I'm always going to be bringing the loop from the left to the right. Let's see if we can get it to be 
little bit brighter here. Okay. So what I'm going to do from the right hand side is I am just going to go into the first stitch and I'm going to go underneath of it like there. You can see the V there. And what I'm going to do, pulling the yarn from the left hand side to the right hand side, I am just going to pull it through the stitch just like so. I'm going to make sure it's still even on this end. And then I'm going to open this nice and big and bring my tail ends through. And then I'm just going to gently tug like so. The reason we're always going from the same side is that it creates a front and a back. So this is the front of the fringe and then this is the back of the fringe. Okay, so now I'm going to grab three more. You could go from the right to the left. The most important thing is that you do it the same every time. Okay, so I've lined up my strands. I'm going to fold them in half. going to open up the stitch, hopefully, okay, pulling from the left to the right again, got my loop nice and big, and then I'm just going to pull those tails through. You might need to pull them a little more tight just so that they aren't wobbly. Okay, and then now here is our stitch with the tail end coming through. So let's look at how to hide that in there. I'm going to grab three more strands, line them up, fold them in half. Open up the stitch, grab the yarn, bring it through from the same direction. Make that loop nice and big. And then I'm going to grab this tail end here and just hold it with the fringe. And I'm going to pull it through. And you can see there that it is just hidden within the fringe. Okay guys, so go ahead and repeat that all the way across until your fringe is complete. And that wraps up this tutorial on how to make this beautiful beginner level crochet scarf. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. I do try to reply to them as quickly as possible. If you enjoyed making this scarf, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.